In this video, we're going to take a look at coastal management in North Norfolk visiting Cromer and Haysborough. So the specification asks us to investigate a case study from the British Isles, that's North Norfolk, and we are to evaluate, weigh up the pros and cons, the positives, negatives, and draw some conclusions. Evaluate the strategy being used, whether it's hard or soft engineering, referring to the principles of sustainability. Before we jump into the case study, let's remind ourselves of some threshold concepts that's important for you to grasp in order to do this. And the first one is to remind ourselves of what we mean by sustainable management. Sustainable management in geography means that you need to consider three things, the economic impacts, social impacts on people, and the environmental impacts. And where all three of those are balanced, that's where you have sustainable management. But it's not just being balanced now because this whole notion of sustainable management means it can be sustained into the future. A little analogy for you for this, if you put your um, foot down on the sustain pedal on the piano, you press it down and you play some notes, the notes will sustain even when you take your hand away. So this is the idea of it being sustained into the future. The decisions that we make now don't necessarily tie future generations into having to deal with the consequences of our decisions. That's sustainable development. These three balanced in the long term. And the second threshold concept that's important for you to remember in this management here is the interconnectedness of physical systems. So what happens at this particular point, here we go, has knock-on consequences elsewhere. You can't just manage things in isolation. The systems are connected. Choices have consequences. So sustainable management, the interconnectedness of physical systems. Let's go and have a look at the area that we'll be studying. So if we start off here just to give you a little bit of the context of this, here we have Norfolk and here we have Cromer and Haysborough, the two areas that we're going to be investigating. But first of all, what we want to do is to um, set a little bit of the context of the geology of this area. So this geology map, um, the orange is showing clays that were deposited at the end of the last ice age and over here the yellow is limestone and what you have here is some information about the erosion rates that are occurring along this coastline we turn the legend on we'll see and we can click on these and we're seeing erosion rates um, in the medium term of around about 75 meters if nothing is done to protect these coastlines there's a little bit and um, smaller there at 37, up here again to 65. And you can see that um, this is an area that is eroding fast, especially the bits here in the clays. Over here in with the limestones is a little bit lower. This is still an area experiencing erosion, but the bit here where you've got the clays are definitely experiencing a lot of erosion. So the two areas that we need to be exploring are Cromer and Haysborough. There they are. Let's just quickly get a, a sense of how far apart they are. We can use the Analyze tool to measure the distance. And we see here that they're about 20 kilometers away from each other. So they're relatively close to each other. Let's go in first of all and have a look at Cromer. Now, the first thing that I want you to do with this is to get a sense of the land use that you're seeing on this map. Would you describe this as a village, town, city? No, oh, that's not city is it but it's a reasonably large town we can zoom in and have a little bit of a look here at the uh, residential areas um, and down here towards the front you can see some of the commercial zones here this is a an area that's very popular with tourism so it's a pretty important settlement in the area and let's get a bit more of a sense of what Cromer looks like and to do that let's jump into Google Earth and we'll be able to have a look at a lovely high resolution image here of Cromer you can see here um, the P 
here here for the tourism and if we go into street view we'll be able to take a wee stand just somewhere down here and get a sense of what this is like oh my goodness now that's what i call <laughs> a seawall why would there be a need for a seawall here like this there's another bit of a seawall and look at those You're already beginning to see very much here what the strategies are to try to protect this area. Hmm. Why would you need to protect it? Let's go up to the top of the seawall here and we'll have a look at what some of these buildings are. Let's come up here. And what we can see here is a hotel. So tourism is a big driver here for the local economy, <clears throat> not surprising because look at those lovely views and the pier that existed here as well. So if you're looking for economic reasons why this area should be protected, that's a pretty strong economic reason right there, isn't it? And as we saw in Google Earth, we got a bit of a sense of some of the things that are being done here to protect this area. Let's have a look at this image. So the seawall that was built here was first built in 1847. You could get the sense that this is an area from that beautiful old hotel that has been a tourist area for quite some time. And the seawall now is backed here. It is by another one that's about 25 meters high. This is a massive amount of hard engineering that's going on to protect these. In addition, there's about five groins here that are operating to try and maintain this beach the front of the uh, seawall to try and absorb the wave energy whenever it comes in. Now, how is this sustainable? Well, here are the positives. Cromer, as we'll see, actually is a not a major source of sediment for anywhere else along the coastline here. So the lack of erosion here, the stopping erosion happening, will not deprive areas further down the coast of the sediment they need. So that's an Clearly environmental benefit. Um, the groins will also help to maintain the beach here for 20 to 50 years. That's going to protect the wall. It's an economic benefit. And the town, Cromer itself, provides services for the surrounding area. It's going to be protected. That's your social and economic benefit. So you're trying to balance these over the long term. However, in the long term, because this is hard engineering, the beach will have disappeared. It's projected to disappear. Why is that? Because we need to factor in climate change, don't we? Climate change and the in increased energy in the atmosphere, the increased amount of storms. So the seawall is going to be exposed, will experience more damage, and it's going to require more money to maintain it in the long term. In the future, you have those economic costs. So you can draw your own conclusion based on that. To what extent is this sustainable? So we zoom back out here and we can overlay a little bit of a, um, a historic map here. Can you see that? There's the original coastline. There's the cliff where it existed originally. We can zoom in and have a wee bit of a look at that. Uh, and you can see here that thanks to that seawall and those grounds that have been there for a very, very long time, this coastal area has not actually retreated in the time that that map dates from, I think around about 1890. So 130 years in this coastline has not actually retreated because of the coastal management. And as I was saying just a few moments ago, because this is not a major input of sediment into the coastal system, it's not having major problems further down the coastline and there are strong economic arguments to protect this. So that is seen as a sustainable way to an extent. <laughs> let's go from Cromer then down to Haysborough. So let's start off by contrasting those. So the first thing that I asked you to do with Cromer was to get the sense of what you were looking at here. So do the same here. What are you looking at? Town? Village? Definitely much, much different from Cromer, isn't it? Let's take a quick scoot back up here again. There's Cromer. Look at how dense the um, land use is there. Let's come back down again to Haysborough. Where 
working at a village here, aren't we? So ask yourself for a moment, would you be more or less motivated to put in the economic investment to protect this area than you were at Cromer? In short, is it worth it? I think you probably already know the answer, don't you? Well, a little bit of quick historical context here as well. This coastline used to be protected considerably by groins, and these are called revetments, which are basically wooden slatted things that run um, parallel to the coast. The waves break in those, and it takes up some of the energy. So you can see in behind the clay soils that exist here, and these are very, very susceptible to erosion. They will erode very quickly. However, these groins are no longer being maintained and where they fall into disrepair because the authorities are not maintaining them anymore this is what happens right, do you see what has happened here now the yellow um, rectangle shows the area where the groins have fallen into disrepair disrepair and completely disappeared the orange line shows you where the original coastline was and what has happened can you see the rates of retreat. It's like the sea has nibbled out a big section of the coastline there. Now this is not something that has happened um, over like a, a really long time. If we have a look at this, uh, we will be able to see just how fast this has happened. There's 1996, 2006, 2012. Now if we get our bearings, let's have a look here. And see if we can get something here um, that will help us see this building here, the white building with the orange roof. There's the white building with the orange roof. There's the road. Oh, the road is gone. There's this field with a flag in it. Oh, that field with a flag in it is completely gone. And again, the building with the orange roof. Let's go and get another reference here of that orange roof. Let's come over here. There's that orange roof those houses are all gone so what you're seeing here is the very very fast rates of retreat you're seeing the houses under threat that are falling into the sea and you see that they've all been taken away now what clues do they tell us about what might be happening here what's the management strategy Now, we can also overlay here a little bit of uh, the historic map. And if I turn on my analyze tool again, uh, I can just measure, do a new measurement, measure something of the distance of how this is retreated in time. That is a distance here of about 120, 130 meters since 1890. And as we've seen, most of that is in the last 30 years or so when you allow the sea defences to fall into disrepair. Now here's another little interesting analyse tool we can do with this. Come over here and this time I'm going to grab one of these which is going to give us the profile. So I'm going to measure this profile from here over to the line and what this will do is to draw on here the shape of this area here. And as we look at the little orange dots, we can move over. There's the cliff, very steep cliff. And there is that profile. All right, let me do a quick screen capture of this. And I'm just gonna pop this in here for us. We'll grab a new slide. Just get rid of these out of the way. Make this nice and neat. I'm gonna paste that in, right? That's the bit to the south. Sorry, I should really should say to the east. Um, where the groins have been removed or the groins have fallen into disrepair and as a result of that we've had the erosion what about up here let's select a new profile right from here across to here mm. i wonder what this will look like again we can run this across here there's the cliff and we'll do another screen grab of this and we're going to paste this in here and we'll just resize these so that we can get them all matching up with each other to make that one 
and a little bit smaller just to get those numbers matching up and you can very much see what has happened here the retreat that has taken place here is where the cliff was that is how much has retreated in as I say mostly the past 30 years or so so this is an area where you're getting a lot of this coastal retreat taking place now I wonder why that is the case I wonder why that is the case let's see if we can find out a little bit more Again, we'll click on this to find out a little bit more information we've set the historical context to the groins that were there that have gone but this section of coast now is an important source of sediment for the beaches to the south it is an important source the authorities reckon that Cromer wasn't but this area is so if you stop erosion here you stop the input of sediment if you stop the input of sediment what does that do to the transportation of sediment well there's going to be less sediment to be transported and that's going to have knock-on effects elsewhere isn't it remember the interconnectedness of coasts so it was decided here to adopt a soft engineering strategy using the method of managed retreat. Now where is the evidence of your managed retreat here? Back to these photographs. Can you see here the white house with the orange roof? The white house with the orange roof and they're all gone. Why is that? Well, obviously if you allow these simply to fall into the sea when the cliff erodes, that's going to cause pollution on the ground because there'll be um, waste products in there it's also um, a risk to people uh, that may be walking along there you, you can't just allow these houses easily to fall into the ground so these houses have had to be demolished so that when this road erodes it'll just be the cliffs falling into the ground and not these. This is a retreat. You're allowing the cliffs to erode here because, look, there's the input of sediment. They're adding sediment to the beach. When that bit of the cliff falls down, there's the input of sediment. So it is a retreat to allow that input, but it's managed retreat in that you're demolishing these houses and allowing them to fall in, not allowing them to fall onto the beach. So that is our notion here of this managed retreat. So that's our notion here of managed retreat. And the idea here is that the material eroded will help protect places like Winterton and Eccles. We'll have a look at those at the moment. So those are other settlements further down that social economic benefits. And the eroded settlement will help to develop natural uh, habitats, including some of the sand dunes that occur. So let's have a look at those, the uh, further on down. So we will zoom out a little bit here for the environmental protection. It's an, actually a very important part of any natural management. Um, we are required by law to look out for areas of special scientific interest or particular environmental importance and protect them. And you can see here in North Norfolk these areas that exist, including this one down here. So let's go further down to Winterton Dunes. Just getting a little bit of an overview of this and here you can see what is known as an SSSI site of special scientific interest in these winter dunes and they need to be protected here you go there's the area there that needs to be protected these whole sand dunes an important habitat for um, wildlife diversity and habitat diversity here and these sand dunes require the sand to be transported along from further up the coast from um, Haysborough, which is there, transferred along here by longshore drift and then brought into these sand dunes to help to maintain them. So there is a need here to protect these dunes. And therefore, as a result of that, um, this is um, more sustainable. It's, it's achieving that environmental protection and it's recognizing that interconnectedness here of this coastal system. So it sounds great. However, there are negative consequences to this because you are allowing places to erode. It will re result in the loss of high quality agricultural land. Um, that's an economic impact. 45 hectares will be lost by 2105. By 2025, 15 properties will be lost 
along the beach road. Where was the beach road? There it was. There's beach road. Properties lost. Um, and they were a very, very low value. Nobody didn't want to buy them for obvious reasons. But by 2050, there would be the loss of some historic buildings, including St. Mary's Church and Manor House. So we go back up to Haysbury here, we'll see where that is. So then here, and there is St. Mary's Church. Google Earth will help us to see that a little bit more clearly. Um, this area is projected to erode, and this important historic building will be lost. So you can see that whenever we're talking about sustainable management here, that there is never uh, a simple, easy, yes, this will benefit everybody solution. It is about finding these arguments and about finding these balances. It is about trying to balance the economics to minimize the economic loss, to minimize the economic costs, to maximize the social benefit and to maximize the environmental benefit. Um, and it's also to see the interconnectedness here of all of these, that actions taken here will have knock-on consequences elsewhere. So this is evaluating them. How well have they achieved their means? What has the justification been? And make sure you can talk about both sides of the argument and make sure you draw a conclusion to express your own view.